In this screencast, I want to do a review of breadth first search on undirected graphs. The idea is that you visit the graph vertices by visiting all the neighbors of the last visited vertex. So in other words, when you visit a vertex, you finish visiting it, and then you immediately visit all the vertices on its adjacency list that have not yet been visited. So unlike depth first search, uh, instead of a stack, breadth first search uses a queue. And that enables you to do exactly what the first bullet says, visit all the neighbors of the last visited vertex. Um, if you have a tree and you do breadth first search, it's just going to be a level by level tree traversal. If you're using a full graph that's not a tree, it basically redraws the graph in a tree-like fashion. And it, there are certain edges which it doesn't draw, and those are going to be cross edges. And we'll see that in a lot more detail in the next few slides. So here's an example, which I'm going to do in detail in a second. But uh, let's just think about that this for a second. If we start at A, and that's the first visit vertex we're going to visit, then what we'll do is we'll visit B and then E. And we'll do that by putting B in, traversing A's adjacency listing, putting B and E on, the queue, on a queue. And then we'll visit B. And then B will traverse its adjacency list. And we'll get put F and G on the queue. Uh, and then, so now the Q would look like uh, E, F, and G, because we've already taken B off. So then we'll take E off the Q. Both A and F have been visited, so we'll be done there. Uh, we'll take F off the Q, um, because it's been visited, and then we'll go take G off the Q and add C and H to the Q. Again, I'll go over this in more detail in the next. So here's the code. Uh, I don't want to get too bogged down in this. I think you can look at this um, at your leisure. But here's the idea. Well, count is going to keep track of when and if the vertex has been visited. So if count is zero, then the vertex will not have been visited yet. If uh, And so the idea of this first driver program piece of the code here is basically to make sure you get all the connected components. So just like depth first search, we have an outer uh, driver component, capital BFS, which makes sure we hit all the connected components. So we call, once we find a vertex which hasn't been visited up here, then we call little BFS on that. And little BFS is going to go through and do BFS on a connected component and produce a tree. So we mark the vertex um, and then with count and then we the first visit to be visited and then we initialize the queue with v then we go into the loop so this is really the meat of the depth first search um, so we look at the front of the vertex and we go through its adjacency list and mark it and add it to the queue and then finally we remove the front vertex from the queue so this is where you would likely do all the work, is when you remove the vertex from the queue, then you do all the work and you're done. So let's look and see what this looks like in detail. So again, this is our little example here. We're going to start off and we're going to call big DFS and it's going to pick A as its initial vertex. And it's going to call little DFS with A and little dfs with a will put it on the queue. Okay, then it, we traverse a's adjacency list, b and e, and we put them on the queue. Then we'll remove a, and so then the adjacency list after a is finished, and the adjacency list is going to look like b and e. Then we can think where we're going to work on b, we look at B's adjacency list, which is F and G. Okay, we'll put F and G on the queue. Okay, and then we'll do whatever work we're going to do with B, and then we'll be done with B. So we take it off the queue, and so then we'll be left with E, F, and G. So this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex. And it just continues on like that. You can read through this and make sure you understand how this fits in with the code. Now, just as in, like with the depth first search, there are edges that we don't traverse. I mean, we've got a graph and we're just producing a tree, the breadth first search tree now. 
and there are going to be vert vert edges that we don't traverse because the edge goes to a vertex that we've already been visited. So in the little example we just did, we had edges that we didn't traverse. One went between E and F, and the other went from H to D. So these are what are called cross edges in breadth first search. Okay, and in fact, cross edges edges have to either go, they either stay at the same level of the tree, or they go to the next level of the tree. So stop and think about why you think that might be true. Um, one way to do this is just draw a picture of a very simple graph uh, where the cross edge will end up going to the same level. So from vertex at level K to another vertex at level K. Notice these went to the next level. If you go back and look at the picture of the original graph, you might be able to understand why these go to the next level and then what happens, in fact, uh, when it goes to the same level. Here's a picture that illustrates the levels and it just takes the breadth for a search tree that we had in the last slide, thinks about the levels. Okay, this is level zero, level one, level two, level three, level four. Notice these correspond basically to the edge distance from the starting vertex. So B and E are, uh, have shortest paths of length one edge. Uh, F and G, they're two edges away from A. C and H, they're three levels away, away from A. In level and D is four edges away from A. So notice, um, we've got some notes here. Uh, BFS basically has the same efficiency as DFS. Um, and for adjacency matrices, it's going to be theta of uh, the cardinality of V squared. This should be the cardinality of V. And adjacency lists, it would have efficiency, the cardinality of V plus the cardinality of V. Unlike DFS, it yields a single ordering of the vertices, okay? With DFS, if you remember, we got a pre-ordering and a post-ordering. The pre-ordering when the vertex was first visited, and then the post-order was when, at the time at which it was last visited. Um, many of the applications are the same, but there are a few that are different. Um, BFS can uh, find paths from a vertex to all the other vertex with the smallest number of edges. So that was the previous slide that we talked about the edge length. That's handy when we get to shortest paths with weighted graphs. Uh, you'll see that Dijkstra's algorithm, which we'll cover, um, basically uses a variation on breadth first search. But we'll talk about that when we get there. This slide just contains some, some of the facts that I've already gone over. It's a good review slide for you to take a look at. Um, briefly, DFS uses a stack, whereas BFS uses a queue. DFS has two orderings. BFS only has one ordering. Uh, different types of edges. They both can be used for connectivity, uh, acyclicity. So in other words, they can both find if they're cycles. Uh, DFS can is very good for finding something called articulation points, which are points that if you vertices basically that if you review view them remove them, then the graph will be disconnected. BFS, as I mentioned, already finds these minimum edge paths. And these are the efficiencies. So hopefully that was helpful and uh, a good way to review uh, breadth research.